This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's another day that was not promised, another day that the Lord has kept us. Uh, we are Church in the Word with yours truly, Brian Cochran. Uh, we are Gospel Worldwide. You can go to gww1.com uh, to check out some of the things that we do, other sermons and other resources that we've been blessed to put together. Uh, our broadcast is sponsored in part by BAC Radio and TV Network. Uh, go to BACTVNetwork.com. And right now, uh, we finally got our software, which we talked about before, so we should be launching it sometime this month. Praise God that we can finally get our TV network going. Our radio stations are up, so you can listen to our radio, to our various broadcasts that we have uh, as well. And so we're glad to be with you. Uh, we have come into a new year, and I am so excited about what God has in store for us. Last week, um, uh, was New Year's Eve, and or actually this week, uh, um, um, and Monday was New Year's Eve, and, and Sunday we I taught about um, reflection and reflect and look back at the at the at last year to see where you were. Uh, what you need to improve on, and how we also talked about, or I talked about how um, there's some things that we didn't do and shouldn't have done, and some things that we need to stop doing, and holiness is the answer. So coming into 2019, part of your uh, New Year's resolution should have been, and should be as a Christian, is to go into deeper depths and higher heights in the Lord and walk holy, because he's called us to walk holy. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, be Pro, oh, oh, sorry about that. Let me let me uh, be product blah, blah blah blah. Can't speak. Be productive in 2019. Be productive in 2019. I was going to preach something else, and 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 of course, how the Lord works. At the last minute, He gave me another word, which is this one. Um, I was going to try to test out our. I was going to try to test out um, our new system. And I had something already pre-recorded that I was going to use. Then I felt led to teach live, and and um, our other broadcasts will be you know, Sundays will be live for the most part, and then uh, we'll have other days that we'll pre-pre-program -pre -pre some events and things that we'll be sharing, and and other speakers are going to be speaking for it. So you can be seeing a lot more of us and being productive in 2019. Let us pray, Father God in heaven. We thank you, praise you, honor you, glorify and exalt your name. For we thank you for another day that was not promised. We come to you as believers in your son, the only way we can, in Jesus' name. Jesus, we thank you for being our savior, to being a ever-present help in a time of trouble. We thank you for this 2019. We thank you for another opportunity to give your name the glory, honor, and praise. We thank you, God, because while we were yet sinners, Jesus, you came and paid a price and we couldn't pay. So we give you all glory. We give you all honor. It all belongs to you. Let us decrease this year and you increase in our lives. Give us uh, maybe walk in virtue, God-like character, more and more like you that we, we, when people look at us, they see you in Jesus' name. May the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, God. You are our strength and our redeemer. Save us, sanctify us, Lord. May we have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. And we'll be, again, so careful to give your name the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. You know, I am so full. Um, I, you know, I, you know you, you've been now, I've been solid on the internet now on, uh, on Sunday mornings for a year now. So praise God for that. I This is what I'm supposed to be doing, and, and this is my church. This is where I, where two more gather together in his name. There we be in the midst. And at first, when I first started the broadcast, I was kind of, you know, apprehensive because the traditional church expects us to open up four doors of a, you know, the, the doors of a physical building, and that is the church, and that you're not a pastor or a leader if you don't have a congregation. And and I'm going to be teaching about that this year as well because, the, you know, because of technology, God has allowed us to go into the four corners of the earth to be able to teach, preach, and proclaim His word, His gospel, His truth, and. Um, as I've been sharing that, that because of the state of the church, I felt like I needed to back up a lot and, and just stay steadfast and, and being fruitful, uh, you know, being, excuse me, being um, faithful over the few that he would make me ruler over the many. And we're in the process of organizing some great things that we'll probably talk about a little bit today, but a lot more in the weeks to come that uh, I, I, I finally found 
my niche of the things I'm supposed to be doing. One is using what I'm using now, which is the internet, and and two, um, you know, creating a movement to help build communities because that's what the church is all about. Is that we're supposed to not just stay in the four walls of the church, but go into the hedges and highways and compel them to come. And and so my my you know I'm I'm speaking my resolution to you now so that way you hold me accountable that I'm going to be active and in, in, in organizing some things in our local communities. I'm here in the in California in the Inland Empire. So I'll primarily start here and then as God moves, then we'll move across the earth. And if you're not in agreement, no, no problem. It's all good because it ain't about you. Um I'm, I'm I'm I've been bleeding and hurting and broken because we in the church um I've not been in the community. We'll get together and we'll do great jumping and shouting and speaking in tongues and falling out and all that great stuff and and miracles inside the church. But if you know the story of Jesus and you saw you know saw in His Word that He did very few miracles in the synagogue, that ninety nine 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 percent of all the miracles in preaching and teaching was out in the marketplace. And so we're going to be busy in the marketplace using this and some other things that we have coming. Uh, out in the marketplace. We're going to be doing some crusades and some business events and some economic development and wealth building and all that kind of stuff. And you're going to say, oh, well, Brother Cochran, you're not wealthy. Well, you know what? I, I have been, so I can speak from what I have been. And, and I'm not going to get into that today um, because I don't want to get sidetracked and get on a rant. But, but be productive in 2019 is what we're talking about today because it's so important that if we do not be about our father's business, that uh, we're no good for him, and that he'll spew us out because we're either lukewarm Christian or cool or cold Christian, as talked about in Revelation chapter three. So our goal this year is to uh, be about his business and be about what he's called us to do. So let's go to the Word of God, and it's a very familiar, some very familiar passages that we're going to talk about. I'm going to park at at at, uh, at one particular passage and, and stay there for. Um, our lesson for today because I'm going to break it down. I couldn't find the sermon because, again, I, I had planned to do something else, but I know it by heart because it's something that we in the body of Christ should be doing anyway, and it's to be a sermon that most of us have heard at least once or twice or three or four or ten times if you've been or more in Christendom, so you'll know it, but I'm going to do a little twist on it because of where we are in this new year. So let's go to Genesis chapter 1. We're going to do verses uh, um 27 through 30, and then I'm going to come back to verse 28 and 29, because that's where we're going to spend the bulk of our time. But I want you to get the whole gist of where we're at. And then we're going to talk and pray and, and start a new year off right, being productive. Amen. Genesis 1, 27 starts as, so God, and I'm reading from the Amplified, so God created man in his own image and in his image and likeness of God, he created him, male and oh yeah male and female he created them and god created blessed them granting them certain certain not all authority but certain authority and said to them be fruitful multiply fill the earth or replenish the earth subjugate or subdue it putting it under your power and rule over meaning dominate the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every living thing that moves upon the earth. So God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the surface of the entire earth, and every tree which has yield which which has fruit yielding seed, it shall be food for you. And our final verse. And to all the animals on the earth, to every bird of the air, and everything that moves on the ground, to everything which there is breath of life, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so as God or as he commanded. And I'm excited because this was Adam in the garden, he made he created him and, and as a matter of fact he created the heavens and the earth and he told Adam to, to all the things we just talked about right and it also happened again and I'm not going to pull the scripture up today but I'm going to you know I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit the same thing happened when 
God called Noah to build his his ark and he brought every animal, everything in it, and then he flooded the earth as we know the story. And then when they came out, he told him to be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth just as we did in the very beginning. I'm going to go back to starting back. And, and so um, in a new year, and I'll say this before I go back, in our new year, we have to re- realize and remember that, as a, you know, he, that we have a new fresh, fresh opportunity, just like Noah did coming out of the ark, that we have a new uh, mandate, which is to be fruitful. Looking at the things that are behind us, and, and not dwelling on those things that we talked about before, but we press towards the mark, which is what we talked about last week, of the high calling, which is in, in, in Christ Jesus. Amen. So our Father has given authority to Jesus. Jesus has given us not all authority. All authority was granted to Jesus, first and foremost. And I want to I want to go back to, to, to I want to say something while I'm, I'm here, because I, I um, saw something on, on video uh, last week. Earlier this week, and I've seen it you know, time and time again, that in Genesis 1, 27, it says, so God created man in his own image, and in the image and likeness of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. There is a word of faith movement that believe that we are little gods, based upon that scripture and a couple others. And I want to say this up front, that <clears throat> that is not true that we are not gods that that then we would be idolized then we would be idolized and god said have no other uh creature image or anything before him so uh we can't be little gods little gods as they say it in in in, in various uh, um preachers and teachers that are teaching that that's a lot from the pit of hell we are we have been created we're not creators we are we have authority has been given to us. We have been created in the image and in after the likeness of God. And we have authority, not all authority, but we are not little gods, just like other religions, like the Mormons believe and other religions believe. And and so I wanted to say that today because um, now that I'm using, you know, being that the scripture is here, and I believe the Lord is leading me to say that, that um, God, God created man, not man created man. God created man in his image after his own likeness. So we have his likeness. We don't have we don't have all authority. We don't have all creative authority. It all belongs to God. He is the source. He is the creator. He is the alpha and the omega, meaning the beginning and the end. There's none like him, none like them, the Godhead, the triune God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit make up the Godhead. And the Godhead is the ones that we're talking about not us talking to him and up, up in heaven is talking about create us, you know, that's a lie from the pit of hell. So I just want to say that, um, even though it's not part, this is really part of our lesson today, but we, we get puffed up in pride and that's a pride thing by saying that we're little gods, that, that we have all authority. We can't cast out demons. We can't lay hands on the sick. We can't do miracles without God. We can't do anything that's creative. Now, now God has given us all talents. So those talents, we can do certain things, but we don't have all power. We don't have all knowledge. We're not omnipresent. We're not omniscient. We're not anything, but we're finite beings created in the image and after the likeness of God. Amen. So I wanted to share that this morning because I know that I've seen it a lot lately. And that has been a challenge because um, folks are holding on to that lie and thinking that that we have, we're able to do exceeding the abundantly above God, you know, because, and I'm taking scripture out of context on purpose. But that's not the truth, and that's a lie. So just understand that we are created, have been given a structure, giving, and that's what we're going to talk about today. That that he told us, he told Adam, and then he told uh, uh, Noah, and he's telling us that we are to be. Let's go to let's go to uh, verse twenty-eight. He says, "And God blessed them, meaning granting them." certain, again, I'm reading from the Amplified, certain authority and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish or fill the earth and subjugate or, or, or um, subjugate it, putting it under your power and rule over it. I'm a matter of fact, I'm going to, let me, let me do this and, and it won't show up on the screen, but I'm going to pull it up from the King James version because the King James actually points it out and, 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 it, it actually reflects what I want to talk about today. So excuse me, and I'm going to read it from the, from the, from the uh, King James. 
because the words mean something more, a little bit different. It, it, it all explains it. It is perfect, but my lesson today is going to be coming from there. So in Romans, I mean, excuse me, Romans, in Genesis 1, 28, it says, let me, let me get back to me because you're going to see a different version. I can't show it either. Darn it. I, I'll do it next time. I apologize. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and over every living, every living creepy thing. And um, we're going to talk about, there's four points that I want to talk about today in that scripture that is going to help us to be where we need to be. And number one is to be fruitful. God is telling us, and if we look at the, if the, you know, the definition, one of the definitions that we, oh, let me go back. Sorry about that. One of the definitions of being fruitful, actually several, several definitions of being fruitful. One, at that context, at that time, in the, in the context of that scripture, it was talking, it, was, it had a double meaning. One, to be fruitful as far as um, um, Adam creating more children, because at the time there were no other, no other um, um, humans on the earth except for him and Adam, I mean, uh, Adam and Eve. And so one aspect of being fruitful is to populate their seed by, by having children. Another aspect of being fruitful is to be productive, which is what we're going to be mainly talking about today. And that being productive, meaning doing something. So now that we're in the kingdom of God, that we can't, you know, I did a sermon a long time ago, and, and it's called, we're, we're not saved to sit, we're saved to serve. And unfortunately, a lot of us, um, including myself at times, have been slowful and have been procrastinating and thinking that it's other folks' responsibilities and other folks' jobs to um to uh, do the work of the Lord you know outside the four walls of the church I thought that you know I got caught up in in denominationalism where it's the job of the evangelist to go out and and seek and save that is lost but the Bible tells us first and foremost to be disciples of Jesus Christ and then once we become disciples meaning learners of Jesus Christ and then our job is to go out and make disciples right and so being productive meaning using your gifts, your talents, your abilities, and then your anointing to build the kingdom. So that could be in any area of your life. That means that, that one, you're going to grow and you should be growing and maturing in Christ. And as you grow and mature in Christ, then the second step for you is to go out and share that knowledge that you gave with other people. And so that could be through what I'm doing right now online. That could be through a blog. That could be having a home Bible study. That could be doing prayer and, you know, you know having your own little prayer prayer at um, school or, or, or work or, or, or um, in a park or whatever. It, so it's so it's our job to go out and be productive. So the productive part is is that there's a there's a the, the parable of the talents, right? One he gave one, one he gave four, and one he gave uh, five. The one that gave that that he gave one to did not do anything with his talent. And 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 even in that in that parallel, I was talking about money, but also talent means our abilities. And so he hid it in the ground. He did not do anything with it. He sat down with it, and guess what? When the master, good master, came back, um, the two that did something, God blessed them and and took the one from the one and gave it to the one that had five, and and the rest is history. Calling them a slowful, slowful uh, um, person, and that that he did, you know, he had no part in the kingdom because he didn't do nothing with it. And so God has given you gifts, talents, abilities, and then with those gifts, talents, and I mean those talents and abilities, he amplifies your talent through the anointing of God that's on your life, and you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, and that should amplify your gifts so you'll be able to lay hands on the sick, that you'll be able to cast out demons, that you'll, he'll put the super on your natural if you'll be about our Father's business. If you're not, then you'll be like that person in the, in the parable of the talents in Luke, and you will not be productive, and you will not in, you will not inherit the great things that God has in store for us. There's blessings that He has for us now, but there's bigger blessings as in heaven. So we do it now because we love Him, and it's our commandment to do so. That we'll show forth our good works, we'll glorify our Father in heaven. So as we do that, that's being productive. If that's if that's starting a business, and in that business you um, like I'm like I, I share my testimony about when I when I first gave my life to the Lord. Um, I was I was very zealous because I had I, I lacked wisdom because I was newly saved, but I had a music I had a cha small chain of music stores, and so we played. Well, so when somebody would come in looking for Dr. Dre, then I would show them somebody somebody godly uh, Christian. You know, I I sold I had a music store, 
And so I sold records, tapes, CDs, and and uh, DJ equipment and clothing or whatever. So when it, so I would play a lot more gospel music in my store, and then I would always minister to people i didn't care if they came back or not because i knew again zeal lacking wisdom but at the same time i i knew that man I, my, my life had been changed and i had been redeemed and i understood that and my life was different now and i want to share my the bible, bible says to be a living testimony and so my testimony was hey i know a man that saved me you see these riches that i have and you see all the stuff that i have it means nothing now i understand my purpose and who i am in god so i was able to get folks saved and because i was able to use my business to get folks saved guess what i was able to send them to the local church that i was at amen and so i was able to restore marriages and again um i was able to help youth and keep them off the streets because i understood my purpose and i used my business to glorify him and the business and, and god glorified me extend you know expanded my business and i was more successful because i was doing uh, doing his will and doing his way and being productive in the kingdom knowing what i was supposed to be doing and so when I when I started pastoring, I went down and did the same thing. I, but you know, I I started church in El Centro, and because I knew my purpose and I knew that I needed to be productive and going and where other churches weren't going out of the community, they weren't doing radio programs. I was blessed to get a radio show that I didn't have to pay for. So I had a four hour. It started first started off as a five hour and it ended up becoming a four hour show um, that I did. And I you know we would play music, you know, gospel music, and then did testimonials, and I would do a Bible study, and then I would have different guests come in or call in and do so forth. And I was able to glorify, and so my church grew from that. My church grew from because of giving hospitality. I had a youth night, and my what I did was I took half of my store and and made it by made it my um, it was my music store, and then the other half, which was my showroom for my DJ equipment, I took that and converted that into our sanctuary. And I, so on Friday nights, I'd have a youth night. So I took my equipment and played some some secular music. But a lot of you know there wasn't a whole lot of Christian hip hop back then, and 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 a lot of Christian younger younger contemporary music for young people. So I kind of mixed it up a little bit. I know you say, oh brother Cochran, you should have been doing that. But guess what? Folks got saved, young people got saved, and we were doing 150 to 300 people every Friday night at our youth night. It wasn't because of anything other than knowing that I was supposed to be productive in the kingdom, that I'm supposed to use my gifts and talents to His glory, and God was glorified. Folks got saved. Families join the church because if you get the kids, pastors, if you get the kids, you get the adults. Because, you know, I, I, I'll i share this real quick. And, and I share with pastors all the time that if you want to grow and build a healthy church or build a church, it starts with the children and the youth. It doesn't start with the adults. Most of the time we think about from a pastor's perspective, the budget. Well, if God gave you a vision, he'll make provision, first and foremost. And for me, because I had a business, a for-profit business, I didn't worry about the the my sunday offering and if that was going to sustain me because i was making my money through a for-profit business amen and then as my business grew i decreased and lord was leading me to another level i ended up taking the music store sold you know it was bad counsel so i'll say that up front bad 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 counsel i should have done that because that's not the lead that was the leading of the lord that was the leading of the man, of man and that's another story but i end up being blessed and taking this other organization who uh, had skateboard ramps and they were doing outboard skateboard ramps, but way outside of town, the, the Lord led them to give me all the skateboard equipment, all the ramps and everything. And I took the other side, which was my music store, and I made that into an indoor skateboard park. If you know where El Centro is, I'm not, and again, I'm not bragging on myself, but I'm, I'm just sharing with you how to be productive, how to change a community, and how to change lives in 2019. And so, um, um, the guys came in that were a part of this other organization. It was Campus Crusade for Life, and and, and praise God for them for, for Imperial Valley. Um, they came in because they were the skateboard guys, and they were the ones that built the ramps. Well, they came in, and and built the you know retrofitted the ramps inside the inside the uh, inside the store, which we converted to an indoor skateboard park. And what happened was that if you know El Centro at all, there are you know it's 116. 115, 118, sometimes 120, but the average is 108 to 110 during the summer, and if not hotter. And the kids are not outside playing, and the city had been promising them to uh, um, to do a skateboard park for them, and they never they hadn't done it at the time. So God gave me godly wisdom and said, "Look, um, 
I, I opened up a restaurant, so I have my finances through my restaurant, so I still didn't have to worry about paying rent because uh, I had a for-profit business that paid for me to be able to do the ministry because I knew the kids didn't have a whole lot of money. And again, I wasn't worried about you know ties and offering on Sunday. I knew that the vision God gave me was to go after the kids, go after the youth, build them up, transform them lives. I, I you know the Lord used me to keep kids from from going out and doing destructive things. Um, I was able to share with parents that some kids are about to start having sex and, and and all these other things that the Lord used me to be productive in that community. And I was a safe haven for the kids. And, and what was so cool about it was that there was local gangs down there. They knew that that um, our store, I mean, our store and our skateboard park and our ministry was a safe haven, a Switzerland um, that no one would come in and cause any problems. So we had no fights. We had no problems. We had little dances, we had little skits, we had little plays, we had all kinds of stuff. We had, we took and, and and I bought a bunch of computers. You know, they were used refurbished computers. I had a computer lab there, so the kids would come in and do their homework there. So all day after school and during the summer, all day I have programs for the kids because I knew that through the kids that I would be able to build the kingdom. And so I'm telling you, whatever your gifts and talents are, because in the world. I do I do parties and I do events and that kind of stuff. And I was doing a lot of young adult, young children and young adult events back in the day. I've owned nightclubs and stuff. So I'm given the hospitality. And so I took that talent that I had and used it to his glory by saying, okay, I gotta, you know, the kids don't have anything. We the adults have everything. They got restaurants and, and all this other stuff that they clubs and, and other things that they can go to and do. The kids have very little in that area. So in 2019, think of ways that you can use your gift and talents to glorify him. Number two, so be so so number one is being productive or being fruitful by doing so. And number and number one also, point three, I guess it would be that being fruitful also means in your local church that you develop the right type of ministries that are gonna that are going to meet the needs. It's no longer just, you know, and it's funny, you you'll you'll hear churches, well, we got a feeding program, but the problem with a feeding program is that they're only coming for the fishes and loaves they have bigger problems there's a reason why they're homeless there's a reason why they're poor and we don't do an assessment to find out what it is that they need and then you don't have to do everything you can partner with other organizations because if we're part of the kingdom then it's not about you it's no longer i but christ in me we are, are we're supposed to be unified and and part of the body of christ so every member has a part to play in building the kingdom so partner with other organizations that can do the parts that you can't do so that way we keep them in the kingdom versus sending them into the world amen so one of the things we're going to be doing in 2019 is putting together those resources that in a local community out here in the ie or in the empire where i live that will have the resources that will partner with other organizations that that way when they need help that if you need parenting courses guess what we have some people that can do that if you're if you need help with with um um counseling on abortion or or you need help with if you're like we talked about from the very beginning the feeding program well one you need to you know let's get some assessment if you don't know how to do that then we have people that can help you put together an assessment program so that we can assess them and then put together within your church the structure how to use the church and use the gifts and talents within your church because other people in your church that have gifts and talents are just sitting back waiting on the opportunity so it can't be all about one vision it should be about the kingdom and within a vision is many members and everybody has a part to play so if we're able to pool those resources if we're able to do so then we'll be productive in our local community so that way god again will be glorified because I'm, I'm mainly talking to you know i'm talking to christians today because it's a sunday church in the word and that we be, have to be about our father's business and be more than just on wednesday and sunday amen our church door should be open more than that the church back in the day, our churches used to be the community center of our local city. Let's become the community center. Let's become the outreach center. Let's become the the the, the dropout center. So when kids, instead of them you know, hanging out on the streets, you give them a safe haven, and then you could do a a a versus you know them walking out and saying, okay, we can't do nothing but pray for you. Then you can also start a homeschooling program. So that way they can you know they can still get their GED, or they can still get motivated to get back into regular school then we can start some GED programs so that way these kids can 
not be on the street corner, not sit at home on, on the on the internet or on the phones, that they can actually get an education so they can get the discipline and understanding of what they can do. And then we can plant the seeds to the next level if that's college or starting their own business or whatever. But look at a way for you to reach kids. Look at a way to use your gifts and talents to glorify him. So being productive in 2019 is getting out of the way that you normally do it and think about other ways of doing it. Number two, multiply. So you multiply your gifts and talents and abilities and you help others to do the same thing. That's first and foremost, I stated, I stated earlier in our in our talk today that we're supposed to be first disciples and then we'd be disciple makers. Our goal, everybody, not just us as pastors and apostles, five-fold ministry leaders, it's every lay person, every person that's a part of the kingdom, your job is to go into all the earth and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Teach them to deserve all things. That's everybody's job. It's not just for leaders. It's also told us to go make disciples of them, right? Teaching them to do, uh, uh, keeping his commandments and his statutes. So it's not just the pastor's leader's job or Sunday. I'm going to say something today is going to probably bust your bubble a little bit, but I don't care because it's not about me. I'm just kidding. Anyway, but I'm serious. Um, that the church, uh, and I heard something. I was, let, me, let me get a glass of water and slow down. Now, I've said this when I first started a year ago, and I guess I'll probably say it every year till till we change, that we have made the church into a seeker-friendly, go after the unsaved, and not about the believer. And, and, and I'm about to bust some bubbles, and, and hopefully this will wake us up for 2019. The purpose of Sunday morning is for true believers, not seeking and saving. It's our job after sunday to go into the hedges and highways and get them saved delivered and set free that's our job when they come into church then they're already believers and then because the bible says what is light having fellowship with darkness it's the foolishest things of uh, uh, that will confound the wise it's 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 understanding that we've been foolish in how we've been doing it we've been we've allowed ourselves to to let the pastor be the center of everything versus the members being the center of everything and God being the head of everything. And so what we have to do, and I, and I, and I said the scripture wrong, and I had to come back because I was about to go off on a whole different tangent, so please forgive me. But the church, the Bible says, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in what? In truth. If you're not saved, you're not in the spirit. You don't know the truth. You may be seeking for the truth and you may be seeking to be saved, but you're not in fellowship, so you can't be in harmony. How can the day of Pentecost happen on a Sunday morning? How can miracles, true miracles, signs and wonders happen if we that get on one accord? How can an unbeliever get on one accord unless they're already saved? Amen. So we have to go out and and, and go ourselves, go out and seek and save and then bring them in. And then as believers, miracles will happen. God will move in a mightier way. And he ever has because a divided house can't stand a a a um unsanctified person can't sanctify the house so we can't no longer yeah i'm gonna say it today we can't no longer i, I remember a pastor telling me a bishop telling me one time that you know i i i use the i use the choir to get unsaved people in the choir to sing i'm like and, and, and through this through singing songs that they'll get saved i'm like going huh show me that in scripture Right. And and I couldn't change it because it wasn't my church and, and I was trying I was helping them get their church started. But but I didn't agree and I told him I didn't agree and I said, Show me a scripture. And of course he couldn't. He was a singer and a musician, and so he thought because that was his gift and talent that he would use that verse to say, Okay, what you can do is have a during the during the day, you know, or on weekends, you know, on Friday or Saturday evening or something like that, or nights or something like that, that you offer a singing course, you offer and you do a a a community choir or community choral, and then then they don't sing on Sunday morning. They, you know, you take them out and you go to to go visit to the you know the 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 um, halfway houses. Go visit the shut in afflicted and go to senior citizen homes and go out there and sing out there and and praise them because anybody can praise God. But on Sunday morning worshiping is true believers, true believers only, right? So I got kind of sidetracked, but we have to get back into if we multiply that. If we go back to multiplying making disciples ourselves, not just the pastor on Sunday morning, but we too going out that are that are just lay people, 
that we get into purpose and understand that our gifts and talents and abilities to be productive, meaning the main part of being productive is not just tithing to a church or going to church on Sunday, but it's actually what you do in the marketplace that matters to God in the first place. Because if you notice, and I said it earlier, that Jesus was always out. And then the Bible also says that we are to do the work of evangelists, right? So that doesn't mean that you're the office of evangelists, but we're supposed to share our testimony. We're supposed to share our faith with others. We're supposed to lift up the name of Jesus. We're supposed to have an answer of, 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 of what uh, God has for us. So when the enemy comes at us, that we have the answer because we know the truth because the truth is in us. So when people come at us, we can defend our faith. And that comes by us being disciples, first and foremost. So being multi, so multiplying our gifts and talents with others so that way they can go out and do what they're supposed to be doing, which is seeking and saving which that is lost. Number three is to uh, fill the earth. We're supposed to fill the earth, replenish the earth with other Christians, right? Uh, California, United States was founded on Judeo-Christian principles, not the Bible, not necessarily the Word of God. The Word of God wasn't the... The, 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 it wasn't a Christian country. They used the principles of the Bibles, which work, right? Just like, just like today, you have, you have these motivational speakers that use the Word of God. They're not saved, but the Word of God works regardless who says it because the Word of God is, is sharper and more powerful and more you know, all authority, and it all comes through that Word. So you can speak the Word, and, and lives will change and be transformed because the Word works. So, as a matter of fact, work the Word. Amen? So, so, we need to be filling the earth. We can't, again, our four and no more has to stop. Yeah, we got mega churches out there. We talk about the mega churches. Yeah, they have their place. And just like smaller churches have their place. But one of the things that the Lord revealed to me, which we're going to be talking a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot more about, which are home churches, you know, the book of Acts, when, when the church first started, it started from house to house. So so let's 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 have churches like I live in a gated community, right? And and my goal this year is to offer a service just in my community, not outside my community, but there's folks in here that need to be saved. I've been so busy going out, out, out that that my goal this year is to offer some events that are going to draw them in and have talks and discussions within our community that will help folks get saved. And once they get saved, then I'll point them to various churches that I'm partnering with and working with. Amen. So so um, my, our job is to fill the earth with other believers so that way, God, so when he's soon to come, he'll come quicker when we do our job. He'll set up a new heaven and a new earth when we do our job, right? So so if you want God to come quicker, then be about his business. Amen? Number four, subdue it or subjugate it. And, and so one of the things that we have to do as, and I'm going to talk to leaders first and then lay people because it starts with us as leaders, that in 2019, holiness is the answer and the only way. Stop taking advantage of grace. Stop, you know, stop, stop as, from the pulpit, do as I say and not as I do. Jesus was a perfect example. So if we're supposed to be Christ-like. We're supposed to look and feel and be like Christ and operate like Christ and have the authority in Christ. That, that comes from us living. When we took the role as a leader and we accepted the call that is on our lives, I'll say that in a minute, the call in our lives, then there's a higher rate of accountability and people are looking at you as an example of Christ because you're representing Christ. So you just can't live a foul, wretched life and think you're serving God. You're not. Yeah, the word's going to be blessed to what I said earlier because his word shall not return void. It shall accomplish what it set out to do. But the bottom line is that that you're rich. So we, you know, the, 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 the message becomes tainted because you are wrong. I, I was listening to, a, 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 I watch YouTube a lot. And and um, because regular TV just uh, you know so I'm watching a lot of religious programming and I can 24/7 I can have the word at my at my fingertips right and so there's this pastor I'm not gonna name his name because it doesn't matter because it's not about the name it's about the it's about the the being being subdued and in, in, in controlling thyself because we are out of control and what this pastor did was he had committed adultery and he didn't sit down. And I was talking to my wife about it the other day, and I said, look, you know, there's a there's a problem in the church today that we want to hide our sin and that God knows our heart and God knows our sin and that 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 we repent. He's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's for the lay person. Us as leader, different story. We must be transparent. 
right? Not just about the blessings of God that I got a new house, I got a new car, my kids are this and that or whatever, that also when we've done something wrong, we need to come forward to our to our our congregations and to the Christendom as a whole and say, look, I've 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 sinned against God and I've sinned against you. And sit down. Why? Because there's a there's a way that seems right that leads to death and your ministry in the long run, yeah, you may get away with it and yeah, it may happen and it's a secret and you may get through it. But in the long run, you lose some of your anointing. You lose some of that because when you repent and sit down, as scripture tells us to, he says, how can you rule a household of faith if your own home is not under subjection? Home. Yes. He's all out one. You. If you can't control yourself. Sit behind now. Excuse my language. But it, but it, but it, it angers me because we think that our, our mission, our call is greater than us living holy. It's holiness. You know, it's like it says, be ye holy because I'm holy. And one of the things I loved I loved about being a part of Church of God in Christ when I was involved in the organization, you know, they used to always say it's holiness or hell, right? And 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 um, I agree to a certain extent because it is about holiness. You don't necessarily go to hell because you sinned or you walk in habitual sin because we're saved by grace through faith, not by works like any man both. So it's a gift of God. So that gift we've been accepted, unless you renounce God and you blaspheme in the Holy Spirit, that's a whole different story. But as a Christian. Now we we serve God, we live a life of holiness because we love Him, and it's what required of us to be successful in the kingdom of earth, right? Here on earth. And so um this pastor, he 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 did not tell the congregation, him and his wife almost went through a divorce. He didn't sit down. He kept he was going all over traveling and preaching and teaching and exhorting and going through the transition with his wife and there was no anointing on his life because while he was in sin, while he was doing this, there's no anointing. It's just like David. When he was sinning, there was no anointing. He was operating in the flesh. So operating in the flesh, you're going to have some, a form of success because, again, the word will accomplish what it set out to do. But in 2019, if you know you're wrong, repent, sit down, and show people that you are just as accountable as everybody else. You'll sit somebody else down, but then you won't sit yourself down. That's hypocritical, right? So in 2019... Subdue yourself because God has given you authority not to be, act any kind of way, but he's given you authority to show forth his good works in you. Greater he that's in you than he that's in the world. We're supposed to be set apart doing the will of the, world, of the Lord, doing the way of the Lord, and doing his purpose for our lives. And the purpose for our lives is to show forth, he says, if he be lifted up, not if you be lifted up, and you'll be lifting yourself up in pride, thinking that I can do anything and God's going to bless me because I can preach or I can bring people to church or I can raise an offering or whatever, 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 whatever. I got these great gifts and talents. I remember this other pastor who was in another sexual sin, and I've talked about it before, and, and he he his his counsel, and he was a good friend of mine, and and um um when he told me what's happening, it's okay, you're gonna sit down. And then I gave him a whole prescription of things that needed to happen because he needed he 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 deserved the punishment. Because it was with a minor, he's an adult, and a pastor, head of this church. So he deserved the punishment that was coming towards him. I wouldn't say, well, God's going to vindicate you. No, you don't deserve it. You, you know you did wrong. Plead guilty, take your punishment, repent, get right with God, and then God can restore you. Right? So I gave him the prescription of what to do. We're going to get the organization out of his name. Um, so that way, because the organ it's not the organization's fault, it's the leader's fault. So my goal was to make sure God's kingdom still goes forward. So we're going to uplift another pastor. Um, we're going to get his house, uh, you know, out of his name into his family's name. I mean, this is this is a whole bunch of stuff that we're going to do. And so he went to somebody else that's supposed to be wise counsel, and this person told him that God's going to vindicate him because he's a bishop. And it brought me to tears. And I had to disassociate myself with them because if you know you've done wrong, just like us, sometimes God will vindicate us. It's like our like right now. Somebody's got to pay the price for the sin, right? Somebody's got to pay the price for what you do. So God, because we deserve death, Jesus went to the cross paying our debt for us so that way we don't have to because the wages of our sin is death. And so the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, right? And so... We can't think that 
because I have a call on my life, if Jesus was holy and never sinned, not saying that we're going to be perfect, we're being made perfect from glory to glory, from faith to faith, that we're being made into more into the image and likeness of him. Amen. So we get that. But the thing about it is in 2019, that holiness is the answer. Sanctify yourself unto the Lord. Stop holding on to the things of the world, thinking that you can bring those things, which is pride of life, lust of the flesh, all those things lead to death. And so your pride can't think that because you have people that follow you, that God is not going to first chastise you because of the Lord love that he chastises. And, and two, seek to see if you are in the faith. And if you know that you're not in the faith and you know that eventually what's going to happen is God's going to reveal what's in the dark is going to always come to light. And two, you may not get punished now, but you're going to miss out on the blessings of heaven. You know, maybe you'll get into heaven, but you'll miss out on all the rewards that you got come to heaven and things. And then I think I preached a lesson before, and it was I would say that that you either toil the ground or till the ground. And I explained the difference. When you're toiling the ground, you're working for the sprout. You know, you're working from the sweat of your brow. When you're tilling the ground, all you're doing is keeping it because God has already done the hard work. So if you operate in sin, then you're going to be toiling and working hard. Yeah, you may have a form of success. But what happens is your ministry will never be to its fullest because you're allowing that to perpetuate that sin to perpetuate itself within your church. Not to mention the Bible talks about root it out. You know, when it becomes when it comes to certain sins like sexual sins, we all we'll blast somebody and kick somebody out for homosexuality, which I think is wrong. Um, they shouldn't necessarily be in leadership, but again, that's a whole other conversation for the time. But Will let a pastor do anything he want to do, or an apostle, or a prophet, or evangelist, somebody that's the head of a church, will allow them to do anything, and 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 sinful wise, and and you have a choice. What I what I what I've said before, and I'll say it again, and I'll get off of this, is that when you know it's wrong, like I did with my brother, I I, I my friend, my brother in the Lord, I wrote him a letter, and I didn't bash him. I I, I, in, I encapsulated with scripture. It ended up being about nine pages of what sexual sin is, how it hurts the body, how it hurts the people. Um, as a leader, what the expectations are of a leader, at, and and our acceptance of the call in our lives, what that looked like and what that meant. And then at the end of the letter, I love you, loving the Lord. When you repent, and 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 you take your punishment, then we can be boys again because I can't be in agreement with you because then. I'm guilty by association because I'm standing in agreement to what you're saying when I'm not in agreement with your sin. Now, I'll love you through it when you repent and say, hey, I want to get right. And then we get into some counseling and we get into some things to, to restore you. Great, wonderful, fantastic. There's a brother that, that I, I talk about all the time. Um, and I'm, this is one church that I will mention because I think it was so phenomenal what they do and how they did it. Um, Pastor Price um, Jr., he fell into some type of sin. He never, he never admitted what the sin was to us he may have said it to his congregation but he has been sat down he sat down for a whole year to be restored now the father got sick mom's not necessarily a pastor she's a first lady and she knows how to teach and 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 she does some things but she's not called to be the pastor of the church but they were willing to let the church die because it's about restoring the man they were willing to have him sit down because they didn't want to keep him he didn't want to one he knew what integrity was. He knew that he fell short, whatever the sin was, whatever he did. But he knew it was so heinous enough that he didn't sit down for a year. So here he is with one of the largest churches in L.A. If he can do it and has done it, who are we? So we got to look at 2019 and examine ourselves to see if we're in the faith. Sub, you know, subdue ourselves to, from our carnal selves, repent for our wicked, wicked ways. And guess what? He's faithful and just to cleanse us. And then be willing to sit down. That's the See, the cool part about it is, that, that when I went through my divorce, and, I, and again, I'm not bragging on Brian, but I'm just sharing what Brian Cochran did. When I went through my divorce, I didn't have a assistant pastor at the time because I had to sit down with my assistant pastors because there was some sin in the camp in them. And there was some sin in the camp in me. And that's why the church, it grew, but it wasn't going to blow up and explode because in my flesh, I could do some great things. But there's some, I went through a divorce, and then I had some tickets that, that, Coming from El Centro coming back and forth. I got into tickets thinking that God's going to expunge those tickets on his own and da da da. I got puffed up in pride and so forth. And so um, 
the Lord rebuked me and said, look, go back and do your, your wretched wretch, go back and do your first works over again. So I end up, because I didn't have another pastor, I end up talking to a pastor that, that, that would take the congregation if they chose to. So I sent them and planted them in other churches. So that way they were free, closed my restaurant, came home and stayed on my mama's couch to be restored. One, so I can take care of the tickets. I could have taken care of the tickets down in El Centro, but he says, go back and do my first works over again. So I needed to sit down because I was going through a divorce and I had some tickets. And I was thinking that, and I'm going to tell you how prideful Brian is, and I can share Brian because, I, you know, I, I, I'm i overcome by a blood lamb of the word of my testimony, and hopefully something that I say will get you to do the same. That when I was on, I had a suspended driver's license because I didn't take care of the tickets, right? I had a church van. I had several cars that I owned. And here I am taking church mothers to church, taking them to the grocery store, taking kids to San Diego to different events and, you know, and, and church events and that kind of stuff, picking up people and taking them around, driving people in my car. Here I am, a wretched, toe up, stupid, ignorant, self-centered guy riding around a suspended driver's license thinking because, you know, I'm doing the work of the Lord. I'm a pastor now. I got a radio show. I got a business and da 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 that he's going to vindicate me. Guess what? He wouldn't do it. And then when I came to myself and realized that, that, I'm no better than anybody else, that I'm no greater than anybody else, and that my testimonial is going to come out anyway. So I said, let me sit down. Let me go back over and do my first works over again. So I, I, I was going through divorce anyway. Let her have the, you know, we had an apartment. Let her have the apartment. I lived in the store until, uh, until the Lord, you know, shared with me that I need to close everything and start over. So if I'm able to do it, and even when I came back, I came back to my home church. I told my pastor, I could have come back and got into leadership at my home church because he didn't know what I was going through, but I needed accountability. So I went home. Here I was a pastor of my own church. I sat down, became Brother Cochran again. And when I came back to my home church, I didn't just stay home. I got plugged into my home church and I went to three services because I wasn't working at the time because I was going through my I was going through this other stuff to clear my tickets. So I was in all three services. I had Bible studies. I walked with the pastor. I walked with some elders. I had some accountability and they helped me to be restored. And so when I got restored and the Lord released me, then this is where I am now. Ministry's been blessed, things have been great. Is it perfect? Of course not. If I if I find myself falling into some type of sin, and I know it's not just a a a a sin of 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 um um that I've chosen to do a sin, I'm living in habitual sin, I've sat myself down. And so we too have to check ourselves and set ourselves down because you got to reflect on what caused you to be in that position. And then lastly, that God has given you dominion. So if you don't, so if you don't conquer yourself and you don't do um, what God has called you to do, which is live holy, and you know you're not living right, and you can't think that the Holy Spirit He will convict you of your sin, He will convict you of the things you do wrong. He'll He'll be that like you know those new cars where when you drift over to that you're gonna drift over into a little lane and go beep 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 beep. It's just like Him. He's that beep 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 that when you're going down that road and you start to drift in the sin, it says wide is the way to destruction, narrow is the way in. So we have to take that narrow path. It's either holiness or holiness as a Christian and as a as a leader. Man, you, you're at a whole nother rate, as I said earlier, and in closing, that your dominion, your church growth is going to be predicated on you living a life of holiness and then getting your people to live a life based upon follow me as I follow Christ. That's what Paul said. So if Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ, was he perfect? No. Did he make mistakes? Absolutely. But what he did do, he knew he had a repentant lifestyle. He knew that that he did not want to, he, when, he, when he figured out what his purpose was, he denied his worldly flesh. And he lived according to the word of God. And that's where we need to be in 2020. I mean, excuse me, 2019 going into 2020. So in closing today, uh, in 2019, your goal has to be, as a Christian, to st stop living in the world the way the world does. That we've been set apart for his purpose and for his use and his use only. And that he'll use your gifts and talents because he wants you to be productive in this season because he is soon to come. But... He wants to be found working. One will be, two will be in the field working. One will be taken, one will be stayed. And, and I don't want you to be the one that stays behind, meaning not just from, from you know, from being from salvation, but being left behind to get on, on all the wonderful things that he has in store for you, that you'll get left behind and get those blessings because you're living in sin. So in, 2000, in 2019, 
um, be productive because God has called us to be productive. He's called us to be fruitful. He's called us to help others. He's called us to build the kingdom of God here on this earth. Amen. So let us let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your faithfulness that you told us to be fruitful. You told us to multiply. You First and foremost, you blessed us. So we have the anointing of you on our lives. We thank you for that anointing. We thank you for who you are, that we can be fruitful because of the anointing that is on us. Lord, can, we can't do it ourselves. We repent for what we've done, uh, not done in 2018. We repent for walking in the world in worldly ways, and we press towards the mark of our calling, which is in you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for what you've done, being the perfect example. We, we want to be more like you and less like us. So we are planning in this year to decrease, that you increase that the blessings of the Lord is yes and amen because we're living according to your will and your way and that we repent for all the sins again that we've that we've committed and we want you to fill us with your spirit fill us with your power fill us with your anointing let us do our first works over again with with humility that we walk in humility and not pride in Jesus name amen uh, before we end our broadcast I want to be able to um, um, give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ I I share my testimony all the time. That's the best one I can share because it's about, you know, about what God did in my life. That I had fame, I had fortune, I had success. You know, um, you know, I had the things, the trappings of the world, but the missing piece of my life was Jesus Christ. And the missing piece caused me to do other things to comp- try to compensate for the hole in my life. And and when I realized that the answer was him, that I believed in his death, burial, and resurrection, that he said I can have abundant life, and that abundant life is a peace that I never had, the joy that I never had. I had worldly joy, which is based upon having things and stuff, but now that I'm in the kingdom, if I don't have stuff, I still have joy. And when I do have stuff, I have my joy because I'm going to operate in purpose and know who my king is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So all you have to do is just repeat the simple prayer. He's a wonderful God. He's a wonderful Savior. And he wants to be your Lord of your life. So pray, repeat this prayer after me. Father God in heaven, I'm a sinner. I believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of your son, Jesus. Lord Jesus, save me. And I'll live for you forevermore. I thank you for salvation. I thank you for the peace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Just pray this simple prayer. Uh, praise God. You are now part of the kingdom of God. And I have some wonderful resources that I have been planned for you that I want to get to you, get to your hands. Um, that's my cell number, my contact information, my cell, my email uh, that goes on my phone and, and, and my websites and all that kind of stuff. Stay in contact with me. If you want to hit me up, you know, hit me up below to let me know in the messenger that you gave your life to the Lord and I'll you know, cool part about technology that I can get you that lesson right now. So if you want to do that right now, message me and I'll get you. Our, I have several ebooks. I have physical books, but it's easier to get you the you know, get you the ebook so that way you can take it with you in your phone. You can read them all day long, or you know, when you have an opportunity. And then I'm going to be uploading all the all the that, that Bible study will be, which I did in its entirety. I'm going to up starting this week. I'm going to be uploading it to GWW One. So that way you can go and take in and um, participate in the lessons as I do the video. So we're we're out of here, and we thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, praise God for 2019. Uh, let me pronounce a blessing over the benediction. Father God in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you that we can live a life abundantly. Lord, I pronounce blessings over those that are viewing and listening today, that their houses will be filled, that their children will be saved, that their lives will be transformed. If they need jobs and opportunities, that this year you open those jobs and opportunities to start businesses, Lord God, that you will give them the vision and the provision to start their business, Lord God. If it's to move into another area that you'll make in, in their lives, Lord, that you will touch them like never before. Also give them a spiritual blessing, Lord, that fill them with your power, fill them with your anointing. In 2019, they can be about your business. So they lack the baptism of the Holy Spirit. is one baptism of many feelings. So fill them right now to live a flow, Lord God. If they're on empty, fill them right now, Lord, so they can be a blessing unto you and be a blessing in the community that they serve. In Jesus' name, may we depart from this place, but never from your presence. May the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in each and every one of us until we meet again. In Jesus' name. We bless you all. We'll see you uh, uh, this week because I got some other stuff coming up this week. Bless you now. Uh, love you all that just joined, tuned in. Um, I, oh, my baby was watching. Bless you. 
Um, um, Brother Davis, I, I, can't, I can't, I don't have my glasses on so I can barely see. Alton, I can see your name. Bishop uh, Robert, thank you for joining in. Uh, Pastor E, bless you. And we'll talk to you all soon. See you next week. Bye-bye.